don't need to stand up so you don't so when, so say everybody's belt buckle, but we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America, America and, and to, to the Republic, to the Republic for, which for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. All right. So, Janice, will you please take roll? Yes. Mr. Fran? Present. Mr. Lewis? Present. Mr. Papa? Present. Mr. Fedor? Present. Mr. Jones? Present. Ms. Grabanowski? Present. Ms. Walker? She informed me she was gonna be, she was gonna miss the meeting because of uh, an injury she suffered. So uh, we have six, that's a quorum. Uh, four votes for any matter for it to be passed. Um, all right, so Larry, did you get a chance to look at the April 20th meeting minutes? No, I got to get it done. All right, I'll get them. All right, so we'll, so we'll, uh, in the packet, you had the May 18th, 2020 minutes. Uh, is there any comments, additions, deletions to those or any um, minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Bob, do we need a roll or can we do this by? Just... No, you can do it by consent. Okay. Uh, all in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries, those are approved. Um, we have two matters continued from last month. I'm gonna go ahead and, and switch the order a little bit and take the Windhaven one first. So 2020-10Z, Windhaven 8175 and 8775 West Oak Street. Um, petition for zone map change to rezone 24.2. Eight three plus or minus acres from the rural R1 residential zoning district to the PUD planned unit development zoning district. At this time, we do have a request from the commissioner for a continuance. It's my understanding uh, with the governor's order, those are pretty much just a, a matter of fact and just approved. Is that correct, Bob? Yes, that is correct. All right. So, um, is there any comments or questions before we uh, take a motion on this matter? If not, is there a motion to continue this meeting to the June or July? July 20th. July 20th meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, I guess we'll take a roll on this one. Yes, you should. Yep. Janice, please. <clears throat> Mr. Franz? Aye. Mr. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Papa? Aye. Mr. Fedor? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Ms. Grabanowski? Aye. All right, motion carries. Six or so, let's continue to the July 20th meeting. Next item on the docket is number 2020-08-Z-Z. A petition for zone map change to rezone 76 plus or minus acres from the rural AG agricultural zoning district to the rural I-1 industry zoning district. Um, before we start on this one, well, uh, is the petitioner's representation present? I guess I'll ask this question of him. Did you notify um, people with first class mail or was was registered mail? Was it first class? Yeah. Mr. President, we did for, uh, registered mail. We did the, the normal okay. standard notice notification, so no way. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. So with that, I'll uh, go ahead and start, Matt. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, members of the commission. Uh, for the record, my name is Matt Price. I'm with the Denton's Law Firm with an address of 10 West Market Street, Indianapolis, here this evening on behalf of Prologis. 
Uh, I've got our development team uh, with me available uh, on the Zoom meeting uh, this evening, which I'd like to introduce their names. And then I'm going to attempt to uh, share my screen uh, here because I've got a PowerPoint that I'd like to uh, talk through. Uh, from Prologis, I have uh, Amy Zebka and Mike Carrico. And then on our civil engineering team, we have Greg Dempsey and Jerry Kittle, uh, who are uh, familiar uh, folks to you from some other matters in, in recent uh, months and years. Let me uh, attempt to share my screen real quick. Can uh, everybody see that okay? Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> that that. Still looking at your pretty face, man. Is that right? And I apologize for that. Uh, let's see here. I did this the other day with great aplomb. Let's see. Oops. Let, me, let me go back to my Zoom screen here. Much better. Very good. Uh, well, thank you for your, your patience uh, with me. Uh, as I mentioned here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, here tonight on Prologis, I thought I'd mention just a little bit about uh, the, the company. What? The company. Uh, has been around for a number of years, founded in uh, 1983, and is really the leader uh, in industrial uh, properties around the country. Uh, very experienced, uh, well-funded, uh, one of the leaders of the S&P. And one of the things that uh, uh, you're seeing here in Zionsville, we're all seeing, uh, and Prologis is definitely seeing around uh, the country, is that the, the pandemic has been kind of a retooling is the phrase you sometimes hear of the supply chain. And it's been the result of at least two uh, driving forces, one being uh, retailers looking at heightening uh, their inventory levels in order to meet uh, fluctuating customer demand, in particular upticks in customer demand. And secondly, there's this uh, whole pandemic has, has really accelerated the acceptance of e-commerce and direct to consumer uh, shopping and delivery, something that was already with us. And certainly this was a robust segment of the economy, but recent events have made it even more so and are driving uh, demand, particularly for properties that are particularly well suited for this type of use. Uh, here this evening, because we believe that this uh, particular parcel is one of the uh, sites uh, very well positioned for this type of use. I want to orient you, although I know uh, you all are very familiar with the area, but outlined in yellow is the uh, approximately 76 acre parcel. Uh, you may recall immediately east is what I'll refer to as the Becknell project, uh, approved I believe in uh, the fall uh, winter of 2018. Uh, property to the north that's labeled I-1 is the uh, Exeter uh, project, actually in uh, Whitestown's jurisdiction, but as a, uh, an industrial use to the north. To the west and to the south across County Road 550, parcels that are owned by our seller, uh, the Everett family, those are additional properties that they own. And then the property has kind of a a cutout in the southeast corner that is a is a unique couple of parcels. One parcel, the western one, uh, has a home on it. Uh, the one to the east also has a a dwelling uh, use. But it's also combined with uh, another uh, property that appears to have a significant commercial uh, component to it. The property has a very large parking area around its perimeter and uh, 
in just observation over the last several months, uh, there's a semi parked in front of the building that actually looks to be loading and unloading into the uh, storage building that's located on that property. Um, so it's, it's very well um, uh, positioned around and among existing industrial properties. I should also point out that one of the things that is driving uh, development in this area for this type of use is its proximity to the existing uh, 267 interchange, which is the interchange that you can see at the very northern part of the aerial. And then also the future I-65 interchange, the midpoint interchange, if you will, which is at the eastern extent of County Road 550 to the east that you can see is labeled as future I-65 interchange. The building layout that uh, we've proposed in the uh, conceptual plan uh, consists of two buildings, just over 550,000 square feet each. Uh, to orient you, because I, I don't want to make sure we're all looking at this drawing the right way, the arrow pointing north is to the right. So the, the Exeter uh, common area for the Exeter project is to your right at the, uh, uh, that direction. You'll see that we have uh, a detention a facility at that end of the property. Uh, Greg Dempsey and Jerry Kittle with Innovative were also the civil engineers on the project immediately east and are well connected, well familiarized with the uh, drainage needs for this property. And so they have laid out uh, the project based on their knowledge of the uh, hydraulics for uh, this property. Uh, it's also, there'll also be a detention facility in the far southwest uh, corner of the facility as well. Um, one design characteristic I wanted to point out uh, is these these buildings have kind of an H shape and that's because there are recessed uh, loading docks uh, being utilized and that's what you see on the north and south of each of the buildings. And this is a uh, colorized version of that same drawing. And just to uh, try to add some confusion to our PowerPoint, I apologize. The north is now to your left. Uh, so you'll see up in the northeast corner is uh, part of that detention facility that I spoke of earlier. And then that same uh, detention facility that's on our southwest corner is to your to the far uh, right of the, uh, uh, of the drawing. I, I also wanted to point out that we have uh, included uh, what we call the buff buffer yard H, a 20 foot buffer yard with the plannings specified in Zionsville zoning ordinance for a, uh, an H buffer yard, which is what's required when adjacent to uh, an agriculturally zoned property. And so the, uh, the perimeter along our Western boundary, which is the, the boundary at the bottom of the drawing, as well as in the northeast and southwest portions of the drawing will have that uh, enhanced uh, buffering uh, around the project. The, 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 the uh, property to the uh, east is of course, uh, shares the exact zoning and it, it has a buffer yard, but, but of a lesser extent uh, for a like uh, zoning classification. Also proposing uh, several commitments uh, relative to the uh, limitation on the height of light poles, uh, downward lighting uh, required on the buildings in accordance with Zionsville's lighting ordinance. Uh, as I mentioned, we are also uh, providing for the, uh, the buffer yard types, as I mentioned, for uh, adjoining the adjoining industrial property as well as the buffer yard type H for uh, the portions of the property that zone agriculturally uh, zoned properties. Um, our practice uh, has been to specify the trees based on the ordinance requirements, which also permits a selection from a variety of species in order to arrive at a, uh, a, a visual barrier between uh, adjoining properties. Uh, we also uh, wanted to uh, point out that we have had uh, extensive uh, discussions with staff concerning uh, various uh, uh, aspects of the layout concerning to, uh, relative to parking, uh, access drives, 
uh, and buffering. And uh, the plan that's being presented to you is a concept plan, realizing that uh, when we come back through for a development plan, there may need some may need to be some finalization of the exact location of, of these various attributes, including the, the access drives. We believe, and I think it makes sense that the access drives that we're proposing will line up exactly with the Becknell project across the street. And so uh, we don't think there'll be uh, any changes there, but we also understand that the town will wanna have additional input uh, as we work through the final design characteristics for the project. And then lastly, um, we have, uh, uh, as, as, as we've done on some other recent proposals, we've agreed to screen any uh, outside dumpster locations also in accordance with Zionsville's uh, zoning requirements. I'd like to close just by uh, mentioning that uh, we certainly agree with the staff report. Uh, we feel like um, it's a very clear and concise uh, analysis of the prevailing land use pattern uh, in the area and uh, believe it makes a compelling case for why uh, this rezoning uh, makes, makes sense. Um, and uh, my de development team and myself are available to answer any questions that you have and we'd respectfully request your favorable recommendation. Thank you. All right, thank you. At this time, are there any attendees in the audience who would like to make a comment on this matter? If so, I guess you raise your hand on your button and Wayne will, I believe Wayne's managing and if there are, he'll let you speak. Matt, could you take down the, uh, stop sharing that? Will. Yes, sir. Thanks. Janice, you're on mute. Matt, it's still up. There yeah. we go. Did you, did it change? No. Oh, I'm sorry. There we are. I was trying to let you know that no hands have been raised at this time. Okay. All right. Um, so Janice, this time, can we have the staff report, please? Certainly. While the parcel in question is within the town's corporate limits <clears throat> and is subject, subject to the comprehensive land use plan, understanding how the parcel fits into the developing land pattern is critical to the review of the request. We've looked at the town of Zionsville, we've looked at the Whitestown Comprehensive Plan um, and have understood that the intensification of the industrial development in the immediate era, area is evidenced in the Becknell approval, hub phase one and hub phase two, um, lends itself to uh, allowance of the rezoning. Because of these factors, a deviation from the comprehensive plan to facilitate a rezone to light industrial is, is, is supportive in the opinion of staff, and we recommend a favorable recommendation to the town council. All right, thank you, Janice. At this time, I'll open it up to any questions from any of the members of the Planning Commission. So I, I got a couple questions. Um, first of all, I notice in the packet that there's a couple of references to uh, the Prologis PUD, but it looks like in the information we're being presented, this is a rezone from, from ag to light industrial. Was it at some point envisioned to be a PUD, but that's not the case anymore? Or? It, it was, uh... It's a good, thank you, Mr. Lewis. It's an excellent question. Uh, no, at some point, I believe uh, uh, some of the staff comments uh, referred to it as a PUD, uh, and I think that was just a leftover in the memo format. It was never proposed to be a PUD. It's always been just a straight rezoning. Thank you for mentioning that. 
Okay. And then the, the next question I have is I remember when the Becknell property came up, there were several of the property owners to the south of 550 who were concerned both about the drainage in the area and also traffic along 550. I know one drawing seems to show 550 being improved in the longer term, but I don't know that that road really supports truck traffic at this point. I, I think the Becknell property, if I recall, restricted traffic going down 550. Now this one's, I guess, on the other side of the road, but I don't know to what extent those two items have been fully explored. Has this been to the Boone County uh, drainage yet? And what do they think about it? Um, it, has, it has received initial uh, comments from Boone County uh, uh, relative to drainage and relative to the highway department. Um, I would say this, that we feel like we're starting with uh, a leg up on this project uh, as compared to Becknell because the uh, hydrology of the site in this vicinity is so well known now. Um, the Becknell project, even post zoning approval, went through about another year of engineering to accomplish a satisfactory drainage plan and, and with Innovative's help, we're really building upon that head start. Uh, and so we feel like we've got uh, a solid foot for the future drainage uh, plan that'll be put in place relative to the development itself. With regard to the, uh, the use of County Road uh, 550, um, we discussed, uh, it's, it, that, that road is actually under the jurisdiction of Whitestown and we have discussed those uh, concerns relative to whether the road is really suitable for truck traffic. And your, your memory is very good in that the Becknell project actually uh, contained a commitment that until that road was improved, it would not uh, be available the access off of County Road 550 would not be able to truck traffic, but to uh, passenger vehicle traffic only. And didn't the Becknell project have the ability to feed itself through its own project? Um, th through its own access points, is that? Sorry, Mr. Mr. Jones. Yeah, I thought they had the ability to actually access those properties from uh, oh. their other development to the east of that, they they may have they have a they do have a full access actually mm -hmm. off of uh, two sixty seven as well. Uh, and I believe the northern and the central one are both full access points. We're we're proposing a central access point off of two sixty seven, and then a northern access point that would be right in right out. Mr. President, if I can jump in here, Wayne is thinking that he might be able to speak. Okay. <laughs> Are you there, Wayne? No? I apologize. We had hoped. I guess the biggest uh, concern I have about this is just trying to figure out where is the demand coming from? So I took a drive out there an hour ago, and uh, Matt, I almost can guarantee I know what the answer is, but do you have any idea how many available square feet of unused vacant buildings that are already erected is out there? I don't, I do not know how much uh, vacant uh, square feet there is. I, I do know though that, uh, the area is uh, actively approached uh, for uh, RFP responses and the industry is itself, and I, I mean this more broadly as far as what is being written right now, the industry itself is forecasting significant increases in demand. And what the, I think what the, the general feeling is, is that uh, the industry was healthy before, but I think in light of uh, recent events with the pandemic that it's laid bare some of the uh, some of the weaknesses of a just-in-time supply chain 
And so there is a sense that they're going to need to have more facilities to allow greater inventory holdings by uh, those who deal directly with consumers. And, and many of those retail uh, offer uh, retail businesses. Isn't, business isn't, isn't the pandemic pointing out that we've got our people performing work too close to each other by you know, when you start to have these warehouses with the 50 and 60 foot ceiling heights, all that density of material that was vertical eventually shows up on the horizontal and that's where they're having the issues. I don't know, I don't, I don't quite agree with that. What I do know is I was just amazed going out Albert S. White Drive that the number of buildings on the north side of that road that are just, they're new and they don't look like they've been touched as well as the, some of the projects, you know, up and down 267, the, the Whitestown Business Center. I mean, it, I don't quite, you know, like I said, I, I wasn't particularly supportive of the projects that went to the north of the Whitestown development that wrapped around that neighborhood. And we seem to be pushing farther west and farther south when one, I don't see the need, two, I can drive around and find another hundreds of other acres closer to the proposed intersections, especially the new one that Whitestown's talking about doing, as well as I guess they're going to upgrade the one there at Albert S. White in 267 as well. I don't, once again, I don't see a need. I see a want, I don't see a need. And what, what we're running up against is there was a whole group of people that petitioned to join the town of Zionsville just to prevent this from happening. I mean, isn't that yeah. the whole just behind the, uh, the push for Perry Worth to sort of join in with Zionsville? Well, uh, I don't know that we, on behalf of the citizens of Perry Worth, I think a great number of folks in Zionsville understood that the consolidation would also be an opportunity to further diversify our tax base. And I could have, I have Mike uh, Carrico of, with me this evening who can talk about some of the absorption rates that are very significant and the industry is calling for more demand for these type of facilities. I'd actually be interested in hearing what the tax so impact is. To supply goods. I mean, how often do these businesses that come into these begin to ask for some sort of abatement one way or the other, even after the building's done? Well, the individual users uh, sometimes ask for abatement. Uh, the, the, the users that move in to be competitive, all of these projects uh, ask for abatement for the buildings themselves. Um, to, get, to give you an idea of the scale. This, this Once again, explain the benefit little, to me. What's that? You're, not, you're, you're telling me what the, what the, you're explaining what, uh, how do you want to say this? You're telling me when they start asking for abatement that there's no real benefit to the town, although you said earlier we were trying to expand our tax base. So which yeah. side of the coin are we on? We're, what I'm explaining is the, the realities of needing to compete in this space. But as a practical matter, this is a huge point, and it's why there's been such solid support for this from an economic development standpoint in the community, is that this is a $50 million project. So you're talking about almost two and a half times the total AV of both sides of Main Street in one building. It's three times the AV of LIDS. And even on an abated basis, it's still a, a massive opportunity to increase and diversify our tax base. And when you couple Becknell, Van Trust, or Logis together, it's a, it's a very significant opportunity to increase our tax base, even with an abatement. In, in ways that are otherwise basically not available uh, to the town. And to do so in a way that, uh, where there are uh, comparatively low demands for service. It's an area that's already equipped with utilities and road infrastructure that is already planned. And so it's a, it's a real opportunity to build on that existing platform. And the staff report indicates that. Uh, Matt, where's the, uh, I know Ronald Reagan's going to come up for this 
general area somewhere past this on the last Becknell property as well. Do they know where this is coming through and, and how close is it to this property? Yeah, and uh, so it is, uh, it's essentially through this section of 267 and we have, we're being asked and are agreeing to dedicate the right of way necessary for that expansion for the expansion of the right of way. So the little pink lines that I see on this one map here, it says proposed road improvements going over to the new intersection. That's not Ronald Reagan. Well, that's the, uh, and I would, I wanted to caution you on looking at, that's the PowerPoint I think that we pre-filed. That drawing is a little off because it's, if you look in the upper right hand corner of that drawing it's it's it, there's a disconnect in the highway between the 267 interchange and the 65 interchange so that should line up with county road 500 is what that's really showing county road 500 over to the new midpoint interchange i hope that's clear but those those new th those pink lines do show the improvements uh, connecting to the new midpoint, which would then connect to 267. So the north-south pink line there, which again, I'm assuming that's what you're calling the midpoint road, is that? Uh, the, the midpoint's the new interchange between the 334 interchange and the 267 interchange. All right, all right, all right. The 500. So now we're 550 South Interchange. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So how much additional setback was provided along 267? <laughs> um, if I could ask uh, our, our civil engineer, Greg, to talk about the additional right-of-way dedication. If he could be recognized. Wayne, can you activate them? Sorry, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, along 267, uh, the required additional dedication, or actually the, the required total dedication on our half is 115 feet, which is the same as what, what it was on the other side for Becknell. So is that the line we see up next to the parking lot? Uh, yeah, it would be fairly close to the parking lot on, on the east side there. There is a little bit of a grass area there. But... Now, is this going to be a similar project to the, uh, I apologize for keep comparing it to the project across the street, the Becknell project, but I know that started out with one, one set of buildings and became a, another set of buildings and so forth. Is that the intent or is that the, the hope in this situation as well? Or is this not going to be the last ones in this? or they're really focusing on staying up now at 267 with these things. Apologize, Mr. Vidor. I, I was having trouble making out your question a little bit. No. Uh, just breaking up. Is, a it, is, is there going to be more, is this going to be phase one of ProLogix or is it going to be, is there going to be another one in six months coming up to us that backs up to this and more road traffic coming through this project, much like the Becknell project across the street? Um, the, the, there is a possibility for future expansion west, uh, but right now this is the only property uh, that Prologis has under contract with the Everett uh, family. It'd really be up to the Everett family if they decided they wanted to sell any additional property. And I think, I think uh, to, to uh, the earlier point made too, uh, for that to be done, I think there would also need to be very substantial 
improvements further west along County Road 500 for that to be possible. But we've got the same situation. The access road is being set up to go clear through the property from east to west. Right. It, it has that, it certainly has that possibility. Well, it's on the drawings. It, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't, we, it, it didn't want to foreclose that, that possibility from occurring, but there's not a, there is not a current plan in place to do that. On the Mel property, the other thing that I seem to recall is that the property to the north was concerned about the project. And I believe that the buffer there, in addition to buffer yards, that was mounding that was put in place to help screen those properties from the buildings. I mean, here there's a, a residence that's, you know, right next to the south end right next to that detention area. I don't know if you guys have had discussions with them or not. Um, and then also to the north, I can't really read. There's a, there's a green area shown, but I don't know what, I can't really read what it says. What, yeah, that's our, that is our, uh, what we're referring to as the uh, buffer yard uh, meeting the H classification, which is the classification under the ordinance when adjoining a agriculturally zoned property. That property is, uh, was recently sold in April of this year and is owned by, uh, as best we can tell, uh, an absentee uh, landowner that we've not been able to reach. Uh, we do know from the hydraulics of the site that the, uh, that, that the ponding, the pond up there is meant to uh, both serve the drainage function and provide additional buffering. It's the width of the pond uh, at that location is a little over 100 feet, 114 feet, give or take. We think that provides some additional uh, buffering between the actual use and the, uh, uh, that property to the north. The dwelling is actually further uh, north on that property. There's an open uh, kind of uh, fenced in area with various outbuildings and fencing and trees, et cetera, before you actually get to the dwelling. It's unclear whether that dwelling is occupied anymore. What, what about the one to the south? And the one to the south, uh, it has that same, so in the southeast corner, there's really two parcels that are owned by a person from, uh, as best we can tell, from California, We've had discussions uh, with that property owner. Uh, and uh, again, we have the, uh, the buffer yard H around the back of that property. To give you an idea of the distance from the building to the home uh, site that's located there, uh, it's, a, it's a little over 400 feet uh, from the recessed uh, uh, part of that building to the home itself. And uh, the property then on the very southeast corner is uh, is a mixture. It has a, a residential component, but also uh, a significant commercial structure. And again, it's, it's surrounded by a parking apron and appears to have some uh, transport or related business function, uh, just based on the fact that there's a semi that's backed up and looks to be open to that building. Uh, we, we understand just a little more detail about the use of that building that it's an absentee landowner from California that sometimes comes into town uh, during the race season and uses that as a place to uh, temporarily locate. Is the guy's name Malloy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Care to share more about that? <laughs> Interesting. He hadn't had more to say about this. Have you been? Have you, has he received notice? He has. Huh. So, anything yeah. else? Other questions, comments? Yeah, Matt, is the county highway requiring you to make any improvements to 550? They are. Yes. What are those? 
So uh, if I could, uh, Greg can, can expound upon this, but uh, there, there are significant uh, road improvements being uh, requested by the, by the uh, and I think I may have uh, misspoke earlier, uh, with the county, they were county requirements. And Greg, could you, could you talk, speak to those specific improvements? Yeah. Um, we had a, uh, a meeting with Craig Parks up there, the uh, county highway engineer. And what the county is going to require is uh, a complete rebuild of 550 from 267 to the uh, western property line of the Prologia site. Uh, we'll have to widen it, obviously uh, do an appropriate pavement cross section to support that, the amount of truck traffic that will be there. And they are also requiring us to put a dedicated left turn lane at the 550 267 interchange or intersection there. Um, as well as on the, uh, the ground controlled by Prologis, we'll have to dedicate um, additional right of way for uh, future improvements by the county um, to 550 if they decide to um, improve it further to the west. So there's both requirements upon Prologis itself plus the dedication of additional uh, right away should they decide to make future improvements as well. Is there anything else? there isn't, is there any person on this one? I say, Dave, I can jump in here if you can hear okay. me. Yes, Wayne, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, very good. It's uh, been a bit of a challenge. Certainly, I appreciate uh, Janice providing uh, the, the summary of the staff report and, and the great questions that have been asked of the uh, of the petitioner and certainly Larry's focus on the on the tax abatement conversation certainly every project that you've seen as a plan commission be it hub uh, or the uh, Becknell projects those those projects have sought tax abatement certainly the the, the town has supported those uh, the petitioners indicated uh, eloquently that you know the every these projects even with the abatements um, do generate a significant amount of tax for the community um, just that's definitely uh, definitely a truth, but more uh, uh, providing some additional information here as well as double checking my audio to see that it works. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there? With no further discussion, would somebody like to make a motion? I move that docket 2020-08-D zoning map change rezone and approximately 76 acres from rural agricultural zoning district to rural industrial zoning district receive a favorable recommendation based upon findings in the staff report. Is there As a second? second. second. All right, we have a motion with a second. Um, Wayne, are you going to run the roll call or should Janice? Wayne's muted. I am happy to facilitate the roll call. Okay. Mr. Fedor? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Mr. Rabinowski? Aye. Mr. Papa? Aye. Mr. Franz? Aye. Mr. Lewis? Aye. All right, motion carries 6 0. I guess we'll see you next at the uh, development plan. Yes, yes, Mr. President, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you all, Mr. Price.
Matt, are you staying on? Okay, he dropped off. So I was just wondering if he was going to stay on. I guess one of the things that I forgot to do, um, I've done, I forgot to do this every time we've had these virtual meetings, is ask if there's anybody in the audience who wanted to be recognized and have their name recorded um, that they were in attendance. If that's the case, could, could they please raise their hand and Wayne can acknowledge them. Happy to do so. I see Mr. Andrioli has raised his hand. Uh, Joe Gregeline has raised his hand. Pause for another second here to see if any other hands are raised. I don't see any more than the two that I have mentioned. So you have those now noted for the record. All right, thank you. I would assume Mr. Andrioli would be here because he's up on the next, next item. So uh, moving on to new business. Let me get back to the agenda. Docket number 2020-17MP, North, North Minor Platte, uh, address of 8653 East 125 South. Petition for Minor Platte approval for the establishment of two lots with a waiver request from section 193-193.056B4 water facilities of the subdivision control ordinance in the R2 Rural Residential Zoning District. Is the petitioner present? He's on. So, Mr. Andrelli, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is Mike Andrelli, 1393 West Oak Street uh, in uh, Zionsville. I represent Mike and Charlene North. They are uh, seeking a uh, minor plat uh, for a lot that they own in an older uh, platted development that was platted through the uh, county. Uh, we thought that the uh, easiest and most simplest way we could uh, handle this, uh, they, their lot currently consists of lot one out of four in the old Keeler Minor Plat. And the, uh, they are simply wanting to divide that. Uh, they are going to be selling their substantial uh, single family residence there and trying to downsize to a, a property adjacent to two. Mr. North is a builder. And, and would like to move into that property and then sell uh, his home uh, to another buyer. Uh, as I say, there's enough property there to go ahead and do a minor plat with it. One of the initial impediments was that uh, the, there were restrictions on the number of lots in the Keeler plat, which was four. We've now got a unanimous consent to go ahead and amend those covenants. They have been uh, amended, those have been submitted as part of your packet to allow an additional lot. So essentially, uh, the easiest, most expeditious uh, way to do this was to simply do a, a minor plat for the one lot that was remaining. Uh, and uh, that, that minor plat would be divided into two lots uh, and, uh, and would be, uh, now become the uh, north uh, minor plat. Uh, all of the uh, soil borings had previously been done. Uh, they will have a separate well. There's no uh, central utilities out there other than uh, electric utilities, but uh, there, there aren't, uh, there's no sewer and water to the site. So we have a separate septic, separate well. Uh, the, uh, the hydraulics out there are quite good. There's never been a problem with being able to find the water in that particular location. Property is located at 8653 East County Road 25 South, which is out close to Wolf Run. Uh, there's utility lines are running down on one side, and there's a common lane that serves four properties uh, as it currently exists. Uh, and uh, essentially, the, uh, uh, the uh, Norris have an access uh, off of uh, 125 South. There'll be an additional uh, uh, access that will be created through the, the, through the lane that, that was originally established. Uh, so we don't think that there's any problems with County Highway, uh, there's no problems with the uh, septic or the uh, uh, well situation out there, and all four residents in the prior minor Keeler plat uh, were uh, on board with this particular change. So it's uh, simply just a establishing a minor plat out of lot one, which was original lot in Keeler minor plat into the north uh, minor plat subdivision. Be happy to answer any questions. I think staff report is pretty detailed and covers it quite well. Mm -hmm. 
Mike, did you say that the couple who are doing this are intending on building a home on these on one of these two yeah. lots? Yes, that's a, a good question. What, what's happening is that Mr. North, who's a, a residential home builder, has the has the home current home on the uh, easternmost portion of what was the original lot one of the Keeler Minor Plat. That lot is being subdivided, assuming your approval, that will divide it essentially in half, and that lot will remain, and then the Norris will build another home on lot number two, which would be lot, the second lot in the North Minor Plat, if approved. Excuse me, thank you. And to be clear, this road is still gravel, is that correct, the county road? No, the I think the I think the road access. No, no, it is it is still gravel. You're correct. It, the it is still gravel. 125 uh, coming from uh, uh, the road that goes up to Wolf Run is a, is a is a gravel road. So it, it will remain as such. And I might I might add, we checked with the county. There's there's really no plans to actually put a hard surface on that particular road that we know of in the immediate future. And, uh, I do know they put they paved up to about a mile down the road to the west of this property. I just you know if they had any intent on continuing on down 125 or not. I don't know. Mr. Friend, you're muted, Dave. Muted. Okay, my fault. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so Wayne, can we have the staff report, please? Certainly. Uh, the staff is supportive of the petition as it's been filed. The petition contains two different parts. First is the waiver of the subdivision control ordinance specific to the well capacity. Uh, you may recall this specific item from various previous petitions. Uh, the well capacity can be at times a challenge to achieve, and certainly that, that item would need to be discussed and, and voted upon. Uh, the division of the parcel as requested uh, certainly complies with the zoning ordinance and certainly uh, with the action taken by Mr. Andrioli and his client to amend the Platt's private covenant. Certainly there's no other restrictions that, that the town has, has run across that would prohibit uh, such, such a division. Again, staff is supportive of the petition as it's been filed, uh, subject to the approval of the requested waiver, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you, Wayne. Uh, with that, is any members of the commission have any questions regarding this matter? If there are none, is there a motion? Just to be safe, was there a uh, request or has anybody oh. held up their hand to see if any members of the public would like to speak? Yes, I did. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I might have been on mute, so. I think you were uh, muted at the time. That's a good point. And also, um, Mr. Andrioli, did you uh, notify with registered mail or were you uh, first class? So we uh, we did uh, we did first class, but the the people that were most immediately affected, of course, were the were the uh, people in the existing uh, Keeler Minor Plat subdivision, and those people were contacted obviously directly because they had to sign the amended covenants that would allow this additional lot. So the, the people that were most affected were the ones that were talked to uh, actually in person and they had to sign the actual amended declarations. All right, but I, I think we'll still need to have a motion for the waiver. Is that correct, Bob? Yeah, we do. We do need a we do need a motion for the waiver, and uh, I did not request that, but I understood that you would want that, and that we would certainly request that you do that. 
All right, so at this point, is there a motion to waive the requirement of registered mail in lieu of first class mail? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, by acclamation, all in favor by say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, was there any comments from the public on this matter then? Mr. Right. President, I do not see any hands raised. Okay. All right. Thank you, Wayne. Um, all right. So with that, we've had the questions. Uh, is there a motion on this matter? I'll make a motion. Move to approve the docket number 2020-17-MP minor plat. We were utilized wells, which do not comply with the standard found in section 193. Dot zero five six dot B of the subdivision control ordinance be approved based on the findings in the staff report as presented. Is there a second? Second. Um, Wayne, would you please take roll? Certainly. Mr. Jones? Aye. Ms. Grabanowski? Aye. Mr. Papa? Aye. Mr. Franz? Aye. Mr. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Fedor? Aye. All right, motion carries. Thank Your, you, the Planning Commission. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mike. Um, with that, we conclude our business. Is there any other matters to be discussed? And Wayne, is there any indication, I mean, are, are we assuming that the virtual meetings virtu will, will continue into July? Has there been any kind of indication from anybody on that? I would say at, at this point, there is no information. Certainly the state, in t I would believe, intends to be at phase five of that. Uh, the town hall is intending to open in July. Um, I would say all these factors are leading towards an in-person meeting, though how an in-person meeting will be handled with social distancing and other requirements, uh, both for the bodies, such as the Planning Commission and the attendees and staff, um, will be very, very different. Okay. I'm just thinking if, if Winhaven does move forward next month, the attendance potential issues with that. So but I guess we'll have to try to figure that out if we, once we find out what the uh, direction will be from the town on meetings. So is there anything else for anybody else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All second. in favor? Aye. 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 All right, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.